Hola and welcome to Mole Mama. Today we are going to be doing a cooking demo of crunchy tacos and guacamole, two of my most favorite, most popular recipes on my YouTube channel. So if you're listening, I highly recommend that you go and watch on YouTube so you can actually see me cooking in my kitchen. There are some questions that were asked during the live demos. You'll get the benefit of others asking questions. And it's just a whole lot of fun. I know that this is not my normal weekly podcast, but we are in shelter in place. And I thought it would be fun to actually share with you what I do for fun, which is actually cooking. I'm always talking about it. So now you can actually see me in action because that's my happy place. I am Mole Mama. I'm in San Diego, California, and I'm going to be making guacamole and crunchy tacos for you today. And before we get started with our cooking demonstration, I wanted to introduce you to the inspiration for everything that I do around food. And that is my mother, Rose. So my mom has been in heaven now for seven years. And we grew up on a dairy farm and our thing together was cooking. We cook together all the time. I learned how to make all kinds of Mexican food as well as Portuguese. My father's family was from Portugal and she's the inspiration for everything that I do. And after she died, I was devastated. We had cooked together. She was my best friend. I talked to her every single day. Even when I was traveling like places to Asia, I still talked to her. And I didn't want to cook any of her recipes. I didn't want to be reminded that she was no longer here. But one day in that kind of grief, just fog, I started making her Spanish rice. And I didn't even realize that I was making it until I smelled it. And it was such a familiar smell that I had grown up with and was part of our home. And I cried, I was crying, but it was comforting too. She was with me somehow. And so I've continued to cook and make her recipes and eventually wrote a book and did all kinds of other things. But she's the reason why I'm cooking. And also it's just so fun for me to see people on my YouTube channel and other things making her recipes and kind of having her spirit live on. Now, everything that we're gonna make today is on my YouTube channel as well as on my blog. So you can take notes if you want, not necessary though to write down the recipes because you, you will have access to them. And the first thing that we're gonna be making is guacamole. Now, my mother had a thing about guacamole being real Mexican guacamole. I don't know where she came up with this, but that was her thing. And she only used fresh ingredients. So no sour cream, no mayonnaise, and for some reason, no garlic, which she loved garlic, but just not in guacamole. So the first thing that you wanna do when you make guacamole is you wanna um, chop up all of the ingredients. The avocados come last. So we have some yellow onion here, some tomatoes, jalapenos, and some fresh cilantro. When I am making this so that I don't have to show you how to do it, as I'm chopping everything, I just throw everything into a bowl. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that so you can kind of see how easy this is. I can make guacamole in about 15 minutes. And the other thing that I do after everything is all chopped up in my bowl, I will put a little bit of fresh lime juice on it to just let it set while I get the avocados ready to keep everything else nice and fresh. So here's everything else all ready to go. I already have some lime juice in it. And now I split all the avocados. So I'm just gonna scoop them into a bowl. And they just come right out. I have a really large spoon and I'm just cutting them. And you're gonna see me get stuff on my hands today. And I'm just gonna be wiping it off on my towel because my kitchen sink is on the other side of the room. <laughs> I'm not gonna dash off to do that. So sorry about the avocado on my hands <laughs> and on my counter. And guacamole is fantastic as an appetizer. It's also great on nachos. It's also fantastic on crunchy tacos that we're gonna be making in a few minutes. 
And normally, if you can keep it in the house, it will last in the fridge probably about three or four days. Um, it doesn't have any preservatives in it. And the reason why it will keep at all is because of the fresh lime juice that we're gonna put in it. Trick to keeping your guacamole fresh in the refrigerator is you cover it with plastic wrap and you squeeze all the air out of it. So I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you um, this bowl that I have here. So you would, if you covered it with saran wrap and then you put your hand on it and actually squish all the air out and then put the other lid on it, that's gonna keep it super fresh. Um, so that, that air is the enemy. <laughs> so, and when I'm having parties, I will just scoop out, I'll have a bowl and I'll just scoop out how much I think we're gonna eat in a few minutes. And I just keep refilling the bowl because as soon as that air hits it, that's when you start seeing that coloration. So I just added some more lime juice to it, to my avocados. And I'm gonna add some salt that I poured this morning and has gotten a little stuck in the bowl because it's really humid in San Diego today. Okay, so pouring in some salt. And then I have a bean masher, or you can use a potato masher, and I just mash it up. Now, I don't get it super smooth. I like to keep it a little bit chunky. And I'm hoping that you can kind of see me working this. Mash it all up. And while I'm doing that, I just wanted to show you too another avocado because when you go to the grocery store and you're looking for avocados, if you can kind of make a little mark with your finger, and use a little indentation, that's a ripe avocado. You can also extend the life of your avocados by putting them in the refrigerator, especially if you're in warmer climates, because they'll keep a really long time. I just will take them out the day that I'm actually going to use them. This has been, these have actually been in the refrigerator for a few days. Okay. So now, it's nice and chunky, and it's got salt in it, and I'm gonna add in the other ingredients, so our onion, our tomatoes, our serrano and jalapeno chilies, and there's a little bit of lime juice in that as well. And now I'm gonna mix it up. And it smells so good. Now, when my mother would make this, she would always take a chip and be like, oh, those avocados, those avocados are so good, or they're not good. But uh, right now, the avocados are just okay, I would say. They're not, it's not really fully summer yet. And there you go. So, there is real Mexican guacamole. So we're over at my stove and we're gonna be making some crunchy tacos. And crunchy tacos are probably one of my favorite things on, in the planet to eat and to make. They're so fun to make for, for friends and family because it's a really casual thing. You make them and you kind of eat them as you go and people might get one at a time and then they're waiting and standing by to get more because that's usually what they want is more. And the way I get started is if you can find them, I like to use um, Guerrero corn tortillas. They don't sponsor me. It's just a tortilla that my family has used for a long time and we really love it. And the king size is their nice and big corn tortillas. And the other thing that you want to make sure with your corn tortillas is that you want to make sure that you have them at room temperature. Because if you've had them in the refrigerator, you know how they stick together? This is just going to make them a lot easier to work with is if you actually have them at room temperature. And um, I also love to use Mazzola corn oil. Again, not sponsored, just something that my family uses. The, there's something about the corn oil when you fry tortillas in it that gives it a really an amazing taste. And today we're gonna to be making our crunchy tacos with corn tortillas, but you also can make them with flour tortillas. 
they just cook a lot faster and you have to be really careful actually to not burn them. And some people might refer to those as plantos, but my family also really loves those. So I have used, um, put some mozzola oil into this pot and it, excuse me, into this skillet and now it's heating up. So it's gonna get hot pretty quickly. And you fill it probably, I probably do like a half an inch or a quarter inch. So you don't need a deep fryer or anything like that. Just any kind of skillet that you have to actually fry the tortillas in. And then next to the, the flour that's heating is I have some ground beef that I have, let's see if you can see that, <laughs> that I have prepared for my crunchy tacos. And it is ground beef that I drain the fat out of with some onion and some garlic and a little bit of homemade salsa and salt and pepper. And that's what's gonna go inside of our tacos. And then I have all these toppings set up for to go inside of our tacos once they're done. So I have cheese and serrano and jalapeno chilies. And I have some lettuce back here, tomatoes and onions. Probably gonna wanna put some guacamole in those tacos as well. The other thing that people love to put on tacos is sour cream. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any, so we don't have any of that today, but that's okay. And as you're waiting um, for your oil to heat up, you don't need a thermometer to check to see if the oil is hot enough. Uh, there's a, a really amazing chef in San Carlos, California, and he has a restaurant called Pazzo's. And he taught me how to do this. So you put your spoon in the oil, and if it's bubbling up, that means it's hot enough to actually fry something in. And mine is already bubbling up. Let's start making some taco shells. So you take your tortilla and you drop it in the oil. And I'm gonna turn my, I know I, have, I put this on really high, so I'm gonna turn it down because you probably want it about medium heat. So once it's hot, and can you see it bubbling? And as the oil comes into it, I get it to kind of the halfway mark. And then I close it. So I'm gonna do another one. So it just gets in there. These are so easy to make. You don't have to hold them that long. I'm just doing it a little bit longer to help you guys see this technique. Let me do a few more. I'm also gonna show you how to make mistakes so you know what not to do, since I've done it so many times, so you can learn from my mistakes. All right, so they're bubbling away, and you can kind of see them getting brown on the edges. I'm not sure if you can see that on your cameras or not, but they're starting to get brown. And I would say probably if you haven't done this before and you're doing it for the first time, I would have your heat a little bit lower than I have mine. I just have it really high because I wanted to do this quickly for you. And then you need tongs, so you just are gonna flip them over with your tongs. You can see that it's getting brown on the edges. And I couldn't find my long tongs, but on Amazon, I think you get 14 inch. So those are the, the better ones to use because that way, the, in case the oil is popping, so you don't get burnt. So I have lots of scars on my arms from doing tacos and getting burnt. So I have a very distinct memory of the first time that I ever had in my mother's crunchy tacos. I grew up on a dairy farm, as I was telling you before. My brother and I were about, I was five and I think he was three or four. We had wandered into a part of the ranch where our big, huge bulls lived, like the bulls that weigh over 2,000 pounds. And we weren't supposed to be there and we didn't see them. And we always wanted, of course, to go and play into the field where we weren't supposed to. And um, we ended up having the bulls come and chase us and we ended up in trees hiding and crying while we had giant bulls surrounding us and 
I felt like I stayed there for years and we were screaming for help. Nobody came. And when we went back to our house and we're crying and my mom, you know, cleaned us up. We weren't in trouble, you know, because we were a mess. And she made us tacos. And I just remember that so clearly at five going, okay, I was chased by bulls. I hung out in a tree. I thought it was going to die. But my mom made me tacos and life is better now. So I've always cherished that memory so much. And because of it, tacos are kind of my go-to when anything isn't going well in our lives and you know, you need a little lift, lift, so to speak. So you can see that they've gotten pretty brown already. So you shake off the grease and you want to have a casserole dish nearby with some parchment paper. Wax paper also works really well. And I'm going to leave this one here because I want to show you what I was talking about before. And this one's even a little bit browner. And then as soon as you pull them out of the oil, you want to start stuffing them. Because sometimes if you wait too long, they might break on you. So I'm going to take a little bit of the beef and just stuff them. I'm kind of making a mess. I need a bigger spoon. But you can see it's got the beef in it. And then the next thing that I do is if people are going to put cheese on their tacos, which usually people, most of the people in my family are huge cheese fans. So they'll want some cheese. And I'll put that in next because I want that cheese to start melting in that hot tortilla with the ground beef. And I'm using ground beef, but you can use ground turkey. You can use veggies. Oh my gosh, my other favorite ingredient is mashed potatoes and tacos are amazing. Now you can see them with the cheese and the meat. And then I would drop them into, if we had, we were allowed to have guests over, I put them in another casserole dish and I put them with all the toppings so that people could actually then help themselves and add any other toppings that they wanted to. And we're going to come back and do that in a minute. But I wanted to show you our tortilla that has basically died. <laughs> you can still eat it, but it doesn't look so great. So I have way over browned this, right? So one of the problems with over browning it is it's gonna be super crunchy and it's gonna still be very delicious if it's super brown. But the problem is when you go to try to stuff that tortilla, it is going to break. So that is the thing. It's trying to get it into that halfway point between it being crunchy without it being so hard that you break it. And then usually when I'm having parties, I'm eating the broken ones, which is fine. <laughs> That's usually I'll start talking and I'll lose track. And uh, so does anybody have any questions so far? Not so far. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a couple of more so you guys can see the, the technique a little bit. Um, I have a question. When you're doing this, do you find that you have to put the oil heat up and down as you're cooking them or do you just sort of set it at one temperature and keep going? I do. I have to lower it, especially on my stove because it gets really hot. So I'm just constantly kind of adjusting it. But when I get started, I don't start until the actual the wood spoon um, actually bubbles up. But then after that, I'm constantly kind of playing with the beef. And I, I'm not, let's just say I'm not real good with my new stove yet. <laughs> We're still getting to each other. Okay. <laughs> it's very hot. <laughs> so I'm an electric stove before this. So I'm still learning how to calibrate her. <laughs> so. And another question, is there a reason, because um, I think people see often that when you take something out of oil, you put it on a paper towel. Is there a reason that you use parchment or wax instead of a paper towel? Uh, because of the chemicals that are in a paper towel. Um, so, and parchment works really well. It won't 
the parchment paper also will not stick to your tortilla. So you know, like paper towel might break apart and actually stick on something. It's not gonna do that. So parchment paper is definitely my, my preferred. And that oil had gotten hot, hotter. You can see how much these are more golden brown the second time around. I like our dead one, <laughs> golden brown. So can I ask everybody this here a question? Have any of you made crunchy tacos before? I'm just watching the chat. And we actually just had someone else, their display name is Goose, um, join us. So um, Wendy Cliff here says, no, uh, they haven't made crunchy tacos yet. I've tried making them before, but it's always been a fail. So I feel like you've given me a lot of tips today about what I'm doing wrong. Um, I okay, and here, here they are again. So it's just got the, the meat and the cheese in them. So why don't we go ahead and put some other toppings in them? And then why have you failed when you've made them? What's happened? Oh, so many things. I think one thing is that I never put, I usually just put oil in the pan to cover the bottom of the pan, but not enough for them to actually float in it, um, which obviously will make a huge difference. And let's see, uh, Karen just messaged and said that they've never tried to make crunchy tacos, but they feel much braver to give it a try now. So that's good. You're giving us all hope that we can do this. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy. You saw it. it's very, very easy. <laughs> and, um, my, I think my YouTube channel just hit or is about to hit 150,000 views of our talkie, our crunchy taco video. And I get messages all the time from people saying that they've never made it before and they can make it now. I have kids making them. So I said, I'll make them. Yeah, we can do it. And I love also my last comment, the idea of a mashed potato crunchy taco sounds like what I need to eat tomorrow at the end of this weekend. So thank you for that as well. Very inspiring. <laughs> Those are my favorite. They're actually, my husband loves the ground beef, but I prefer the mashed potatoes. And if you're going to do the mashed potatoes, just make sure that you do kind of mashed potatoes on the drier side. That will help to just kind of keep it in the, the crunchy taco. But I definitely would do all the other toppings that I'm doing here um, on a potato crunchy taco. It's so good. And if you make them, please message me so I can know if you liked them. I hope that, but you're going to love them. If you love potatoes, you're going to love them. Okay, so we're going to put some, uh, we're gonna, just going to start topping them. And like I said, usually if I have guests in the house, I just let them just, I have everything out on the counter and I just let them do it. But I'm just doing some onions and a few peppers. Serrano and um, jalapeno peppers are my favorite. They're pretty spicy, but I really like them. And then we have some tomatoes. And you guys, the other thing about crunchy tacos, if you end up with too many, as long as you have not filled them with any veggies at all, you can freeze them. I have frozen them. I have family on the East Coast and I have flown with crunchy tacos. So you freeze them, you pop them out, you heat them up in the oven and you just put fresh toppings on them and they're really good. So if you find you end up with too many, it works. All right, and then I'm gonna also add some lettuce to it. And I'm just not, I'm not poking them too much because I don't wanna get my hands all full of stuff, but I would actually shove this in a little bit better. But there you go. Four crunchy tacos. See how easy that was? So easy. And so, oh, thank you. Yeah, you got some clapping. Yay. <laughs> so easy. So, so easy. And um, the other thing is, it's like there's 30 tortillas in that uh, from Guerrero's, and I think it's like two or three dollars. So you can make 30 tacos. Can I ask how it is that you? freeze them like do you put them between parchment paper and then just put them in a bag and put them in the freezer no 
<laughs> no. Um, so once you put the hamburger in that or wh whatever your ingredient is, just make sure that you don't put any um, raw vegetables in them. Then I put them in like a plastic container uh, or you can even do a Ziploc and I just put them in the fridge or the freezer, excuse me. That's it. That's all. They, they have flown from California all the way to New York more than once. That's <laughs> great. When my family comes, they make me make them tacos. Oh, they don't make me. I love making tacos for them. And then they're like, okay, we're taking the leftovers with us. Because I usually, when I have a party um, and, you know, maybe I have 10 to 15 people here, I'll make 90 tacos. <laughs> so and so usually and, and people know that that's part of the thing they're going to come they're going to eat as many as they want they're going to leave with some tacos um so they're pretty excited about that so we usually have some that they can either freeze or whatever the other thing that's amazing about tacos and guacamole is margaritas oh my gosh so good with margaritas you guys just and that's usually what happens my husband does the margaritas i do the tacos I also serve tacos with Spanish rice. Uh, the recipe's also on my YouTube channel, it's just Mole Mama. And I also will often serve it with Peruvian refried beans and have bacon in them. So this is a totally decadent experience. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe, reach out with any questions at all. And as my mother always said to me, as we said our goodbyes, que Dios te bendiga. May God bless you.